In this video, we're going to cover orthopedic pathology in the young throwing athlete. There's three conditions we see all the time in our young throwers, little leaguer's shoulder, little leaguer's elbow, and panner's disease. We want to talk about what's actually going on orthopedically here in this video. If you like this format, at any point in the video, throughout the entire course of watching this, give us a thumbs up, let us know in the comments section because this is a format that we're using with our continuing education courses. We're putting together courses for coaches, players, parents, but we're also putting together certification programs for our rehabilitation professionals, and we're putting together a certification program for a performance enhancement specialist, our guys that are working in the strength and conditioning field or working more in that performance enhancement domain. And this is a format we use a lot of times to go through theoretical concepts, anatomical talk, pathology, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, before we actually go into a practical application. So let us know if you like this video. But when we actually talk about injuries in the young athlete, we have to keep a few things in mind. The majority of the time we're dealing with something minor, strain, sprain, tendonitis type of issue, something that we see as more transient. It's going to go away. We're going to get it for four or five days, maybe six weeks, but with a little rest, a uh, little bit of the right inputs into the system, meaning maybe the right exercise, maybe the right type of massage, the right type of stretching, those sorts of things, it's gonna go away relatively quickly. Six weeks can feel like a long time to a young guy, but it's a short time for medical professionals in terms of injury. What we're gonna talk about here are three injuries that are, are guys that are dealing with more chronic pain, maybe a higher level of pain, and it's a little bit more serious in terms of what's going on from an anatomical and orthopedic medical perspective here. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is growth plates are open in our young guys. As we get more skeletally mature, growth plates fuse and close. We no longer have growth plate related injuries. Young guys have growth plate related injuries and those are our most common, what we would deem really serious injuries that we see in our young guys. So at the shoulder, we're going to cover one, that's little leaguer's shoulder, which is epiphyseal lysis, which essentially means separation of the epiphysis and the metastasis. There's a growth plate fracture. There's separation of the growth plate, and this is occurring due to a shear and torsional mechanism, which basically means the arm goes into external rotation in the throw. As the arm lays back, there's this big rotational force on the arm laying back in the throw as the athlete comes through the acceleration phase and that leads to separation of the growth plate. It's getting twisted excessively and repetitively. There's an overuse component that's leading to separation of that growth plate and it's in our guys that have open growth plates. And so here on the next slide, you can see a normal shoulder on the right, a little leaguer shoulder on the left. On the right, you see really a bone that is not fully formed, right? We see that there's a little cleft here, which is drawn to indicate the growth plate on the outside of the elbow. On the left side, we see that there's separation where that little cleft is. And so we have a growth plate fracture here. Now, radiographically, if you look at the x-ray, there's gonna be a line all the way across or at times there'll be a line all the way across, and that just depends on the development of the bone where that individual is developmentally. What we've done here is we've tried to combine what the radiographs, what the x-rays look like with what the actual bone would look like, hey, if we took it out, tried to draw that. So that's what our graphic designer, our artist has done here for us very nicely, showed the greater degree of separation on that little leaguer shoulder than the normal shoulder. Now, that big bony prominence above, that's known as a tuberosity or a tubercle, and that's where our rotator cuff attaches, and there's a bunch of muscles that attach in this vicinity, but the rotator cuff attaches there, which additionally, whenever the athlete's moving the shoulder, it's gonna have a hard time stabilizing the shoulder, and it's gonna be painful because there's pulling right next to where that growth plate is separated. Treat a growth plate injury like a fracture because we call them growth plate fractures, and they are. So excessive over 
use of this arm, especially throwing when there's already an injury, is not good long term. Um, long term, we can potentially see morphological change and structural change to the bone because it's not going to heal properly. If there's too great of a separation of the bone, it's very hard for it to heal properly. The bone's not going to just come back together if it's really separated. Now, if there's slight separation, our hope is that, hey, it, bone will grow into that area, it'll come back together, and that's typically what happens. Sometimes we need to rely on orthopedic surgeons to assist us in getting that growth plate to or that bone to line up properly and that's more serious case a lot of times some serious trauma but at times we'll see an avulsion what's known as an avulsion where a piece of bone is pulled off and we see that more commonly in the elbow and what we're talking about here is little leaguer's elbow and so this is epiphyseal lysis again it's separation of the metaphysis and the epiphysis basically what's happening is you're having a portion which is that tuberosity here, essentially, which is what an epicondyle is. It's an outgrowth of bone. And to think of it in the same way, it's pulled. It's pulled really hard. So we have a torsional mechanism at the shoulder. Boom, bone's rotated. It rotates at the weakest link, most of all, which is the growth plate. Here, there's that same mechanism, but now we have a pulling on this inside bone on the inside of the elbow where you can see in this image, that's the UCL that's attached to it. So the UCL is pulling on it and the muscles that actually attach on the inside of the elbow, all these forearm muscles that attach on the inside of the elbow are pulling on that bone. And that's why we have written apophysitis here, which is more of a traction slash tensile related issue where we're getting a ton of tension, we're getting a ton of pulling on a bone and it pulls away at the growth plate. So once again, we have a growth plate fracture. So little leaguer's shoulder and little leaguer's elbow are both growth plate fractures. Now, all of these occur in skeletally immature athletes. They do not occur in skeletally mature athletes, and the reason for that is their growth plates are fused. So if this bone pulls off too far, and there's too much gapping, and the surgeon deems that, hey, that's probably not gonna heal properly, they're gonna go in and tack it down. They're gonna go put a little pin in it. And that's what we see from time to time with athletes who have had a pin put in their elbow is that it was a result of Little Eager's elbow. Now, hopefully there's only a small degree of separation and we've caught it early enough to the point where we can treat it with rest primarily. And that's going to be the initial treatment for a lot of these things as long as they're not too an extent where they're going to require surgical intervention is we got to rest. You got to shut it down. You got to get away from the injury mechanism, which in this case is excessive tension on the inside of the elbow. The other one, torsion. The next one we'll see is compression, which is Panner's disease. The most important thing to take note of with any of these injuries here is the Athlete is usually overusing their arm, and that's what we hear from all of our surgeons, all of our rehabilitation professionals, there's an overuse issue. Well, that's often the case, but it's not always the case. What's, and I, and I want to refrain from use, using always because it's not great to speak in absolutes. Having worked with hundreds of athletes that have shoulder and elbow injuries, I'm yet to see one that doesn't have some form of biomechanical inefficiency in their throw that's contributed to their pain or injury. I just don't see it. Every athlete that comes in to see me so far, out of hundreds, has had some form of inefficiency or incorrect positioning of their arm at certain instances in the throw that have contributed to their injury. As you get to higher levels of the game, when athletes throw harder and harder, these biomechanical inefficiencies are a little smaller. Sometimes you get to very high levels of the game where the athlete's throwing very hard, they're very efficient. One little thing off in their throw can result in tissue injury. Sometimes the athlete is very, very efficient and the biomechanical fault doesn't present itself until the athlete gets fatigued, which means they had overuse that led to misuse 
a lot of times we have the opposite, which means that the athlete, maybe 12 year old kid, I can't tell you how many have thrown 10 innings and already have elbow injury. Why? Was it really overuse? Well, it was overuse with a bad pattern. They did too many repetitions with a faulty pattern that led to excessive stress on the elbow. So without going too in depth here, there's always some form of mechanical contribution to these form of injury. But we have to understand that that mechanical contribution goes in conjunction with other contributors to injury, including too many repetitions, not enough rest, not enough local rest, meaning rest in the immediate time, like not a cumulative rest, but sleep the night before, improper hydration, all of these other factors, the most important of which is throwing mechanics, like we said. Now, athletes have weakness in a certain plane, inflexibility in a certain plane, those things have to be addressed as well. But the best thing that can be done to prevent some of these injuries or prevent the recurrence of some of these injuries is to make sure the athlete throws in an efficient manner, make sure they're flexible where they need it and strong where they need it. And then lastly, make sure that they're utilizing the proper dosage, which means throwing the proper number of times, giving themselves proper amount of rest prior to throwing again, those sorts of things. So we have Panner's disease. Panner's disease is once again, um, a multifactorial injury. And it's often a result of the previous injury that you just saw, Little Leaguer's elbow. Sometimes it happens after UCL tear, after um, just congenital laxity. So somebody has looseness in their elbow. Naturally, we see these sorts of things. So what's actually occurring? Well, it's a compression on the outside of the elbow, the lateral side of the elbow. So we talked about the medial side of the elbow, the inside of the elbow, getting a tension-related issue. That is our... Little Leaguer's elbow. Now in older athletes, that's our ulnar collateral ligament tears. So the same mechanism that results in Little Leaguer's elbow unaddressed may result in UCL tear later on in an athlete's career. But Panner's disease, when that out, inside the elbow gaps too much, the outside of the elbow compresses too much. So you have gapping on one side, gap, the other side compresses more. It's a bending force. So if you bend a a uh, stick, there's, and you try to break a green stick, it'll pull apart and there'll be tension related on the inside or on the outside, sorry, on the inside here of the stick that I'm bending this way, it'll be compressed. Those, the fibers of that branch or that stick will be coming compressed. So there's a bending force and that's what happens at the elbow. Tension here, compression on the outside as a result of my arm snapping back into external rotation and laying back that way. So what happens here is too much compression. We talked about torsional load, the humerus, little league shoulder, traction, little league's elbow, compression, Panner's disease. And sometimes these things occur together. And basically what happens is the cartilage is getting compressed inside the joint. We have this nice smooth articular cartilage inside the joint. It has a little bit of a blood supply, not a whole lot, a little bit. But that cartilage keeps getting compressed and banged up, banged up, banged up because the elbow is compressing too much on this outside portion. And when that happens, the cartilage becomes damaged. There's not enough blood supply to repair it in time. And sometimes the blood supply actually becomes um, implicated as well where the vasculature, the little tiny vessels that go into the area become damaged due to the compression. The cartilage doesn't get blood supply anymore and it begins to die off it begins when it begins to die it begins to pull away from the bone and sometimes you get these little loose bodies inside the the joint that are floating around these little loose pieces of cartilage that they fell off the bone because they were they were dying off and that's just too much compression this individual that has this condition has got to shut down right away and hopefully there's um only damage to an extent that it can be managed. Now these individuals are gonna develop osteoarthritis later on. You know, hopefully we can catch it when very little cartilage has become damaged, but the more cartilage that pulls away from and falls off of the bone, the 
more likely in the earlier onset of arthritis these individuals are going to have. So sometimes we see athletes, professional athletes, who already have um, some degeneration and arthritis inside the joint as a result of Panner's disease when they were in their teens and early 20s. Now, a lot of those guys were guys that had UCL tears prior, um, and a couple of the guys had little leaguer's elbow and maybe had a little bit too much gapping when they were young, Panner's disease at a young age. Now, if the growth plate is open, what can happen is, like the growth plate's not fused yet, what can happen is the growth plate becomes compressed. It doesn't get pulled apart too much, it narrows and becomes pushed together too much. And that also can lead to damage of the growth plate. The growth plate cells, the epiphyseal cells, can die a little bit in there and the growth plate can become damaged. Now if this happens to a great extent, growth can be stunted in that bone and it's rather unfortunate when that occurs, but it's usually the result of prolonged exposure to excessive stress on that portion of the elbow and a lot of playing through pain, a lot of continued throwing that's now resulted in the elbow becoming damaged to an extent where tissue is dying and the growth is stunted. So really we wanna catch this stuff early on and the most important component of that is not playing through pain and identifying the difference between pain and soreness for our young guys. Now, what we see more commonly is not necessarily this, this uh, Panner's disease that results in growth being stunted in the bone, but often we see cartilage defects as a result of improper throwing mechanics combined with injuries on the inside of the elbow and we need to make sure that we give these athletes proper rest and we utilize exercise in the proper way and so if you're kind of interested in more information on this give this video a like that lets us know you like the format here which like i said we're using for our certifications and uh, education programs and also lets us know you like the content and i'm happy to make more videos on this stuff more in depth, show more stuff on how we actually may treat these individuals, what, what these athletes can do at home, what, what parents and coaches can do at home with these athletes to prevent it. Whatever you guys want to see, you got to let us know in the comments section. We'll be happy to, to create that for you guys. And then also make sure to check out our website, overheadathletics.com. We've put together corrective exercise programs, shoulder strengthening programs, and most importantly, throwing programs that are focused around getting the elbow and shoulder in stable positions where they're not stressed in the same way that leads to and causes injury. So we've tried to utilize as many different applications of throwing techniques as possible to take athletes from inefficiency towards efficiency where they're going to be able to have longevity in their career and protect their shoulder and elbows from these injuries or from the recurrence of these injuries. So check that out, overheadathletics.com. I'm Max Wardell. Thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you guys in the next video.